So in training, you are a freaking god. You're amazing, you're lean El Messi in training. You are, you're zipping past people, dribbling nutmegs, chipping keepers, you know, you look like you, you should be at the pro leagues, the top of the game, lifting the Premier League, World Cup, and Champions League simultaneously. You're that good in training. But then you get in a match and your average is all hell. Well, let's go over why that might be the case. This video is sponsored by Rocket Sports, where you can actually enter to win a free goal from them. I love these goals. They're so easy to assemble, and you're able to use them at a field where you may not have anything else to use, no goals, no equipment. And I love to use them for my own training sessions, whether I'm by myself or with someone else. They're great for team trainings. And the great thing about these goals is they only take a couple of minutes to put up and to take apart and they also come with their own carrying case so that they're easy to transport to and from the field. Let's get into the video. All right guys, welcome. This is Dave from Simply Soccer. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe and bell icon because we release uh, weekly videos to help you improve your game and stand on the pitch. If you haven't got my free book, ebook, Game Changer either, get that down below. It's absolutely free. It's in the description. Uh, and I'll also put it in the comments so you can download Game Changer if you haven't already. Now. I want to do this one a little more off the cuff um, because I get this question a lot. I did make a video a while ago, a few years ago, on this topic of why is it some players are just so good in training? I mean, like better than you would ever believe. And then they just go missing in matches. Well, there's a few things I've noticed uh, in myself and in other players, and it's usually the same across the board, although it can vary. So I'm going to give you some ideas to help you with this. First and foremost, understand that at the root of this, it's gonna be a confidence issue. And I'm gonna explain why. Now, I know that might be a tiresome, boring answer for you, um, but it is, and I'm gonna explain exactly why it's a confidence thing for the most part, and what you can do to start actually mimicking your performances and practices into your matches. So, when it comes to this kind of inconsistency, especially when a player has skill, it is almost always a mentality thing. It is almost always a confidence thing because their technical ability, if they have it, is, is unquestionable. But for whatever reason, it doesn't click in matches. And it could be their decision making is good in practice it, as well. It can be that they're, they're hitting the mark on everything in their training and not matches. 99% of the time, it's confidence. It's some kind of mental block or some kind of self-image issue um, when they get into match situations. Now, the real reason is because in training, there's very little pressure. Think of the mindset you take into training versus the mindset you take into matches. I almost guarantee for most of you, you go into training knowing it's training, knowing that mistakes are okay. I'm not gonna make them deliberately, but it's okay. I can try things and you know, it's if I mess up a little bit, it's not that calamitous. But no one wants to make those same mistakes in game. And so what this does to your mindset, to your mentality, is you start to play a little within yourself because you're so afraid of making a mistake, you're so afraid and that you're going to do something that's gonna hurt your team or make you look bad or get, or some for some players even get made fun of. I've had people tell me that. Um, so much that you end up playing simple to a fault and not doing the things that you know you can do. In training, when we flip it, most players, again, they will, the skillful technical players, they'll be scoring amazing goals. They'll be weaving in and out of players. They'll be playing those passes, playing great one-two touch. Their touch is, is good. Because they're not thinking about messing up. They're not thinking about, you know, making a mistake. They're just playing their game. But because a match is a higher pressure situation, they tend to buckle under that pressure a little because although they have the ability, they've shown they have the ability in practice, they treat the game differently. So what is the solution here? Because that's all great. Okay, I've identified the issue. Great, Dave, what, what do I do? Well, there's a few things you can do. One, obviously, you need to change your relationship with mistakes. You need to change, not your relationships with mistakes necessarily, but the idea of making them. Because we are under the impression that making mistakes is a bad thing. And it's not. The, you're gonna learn more from your mistakes than you ever will from your successes. Now, that being said, you do not wanna make that many mistakes in matches. It's true, you want to practice to the point where you're not. However, no player, good player, um, especially when you get to the pro levels, got there without taking risk. And it's a natural part of the game. 
So if you're going to go into your matches, especially if you're an attacking player, this happens more for attacking players, by the way, um, because these are the players that normally in practice, they will be dribbling against players. They'll be beating them one-on-one. -on -one, they'll be shooting and scoring. And those are high risk uh, situations because if you dribble there's always the risk of losing the ball take someone one-on-one -on -one, same thing if you shoot there's the risk of taking a bad shot having it blocked missing terribly uh, if you try that you know pretty technically hard through ball or pass also the risk of losing it you know ruining the momentum whatever but you can't be afraid of these risks the best players take risks the best players understand sure there's a chance they'll make a mistake and they do it anyway not all the time, calculated risks, but you need to change your relationship with mistakes. You need to look at it a little bit differently. You need to understand that if you're going to stand out in matches, especially as an attacking player, you're going to have to take risks. And if you're nervous, it's going to be more likely that the risk will not pay off. Now, there are plenty of other things that might contribute to this, maybe a poor self-image, negative self-talk, not enough practice, but the point is this is a player who's good in practice and not in matches. But when it's usually that case in particular, great in practice, not in matches, it's a pressure, um, scared of making a mistake type mentality. You know, you have to go in to your matches with this, this really almost, almost confidence to the level of arrogance in a, in a way. Not, not where you're, but, but where you just know you're a good player. You know you can do it. You know that you can score the goals. You know you can dribble. You've shown yourself millions of times in practice and you have to adopt that same mentality in matches. And of course, what you do in practice is not gonna be exactly the same as what you do in matches. If any of you resonate with this, if any of you who are watching this have this issue, you need to make a commitment to work on your confidence when you go into matches. You need to, because this is something you can work on, right? Obviously, you're doing the training, so it's not just down to the physical skills. Yes, confidence is built by how good you are at the thing. If you can do a step over just really quick and blow a defender away in training, you're going to have the confidence most likely to do it in a match. But if you're already at that point and still finding the nervousness, it's something that's happening internally within you that you need to uh, reconcile with. Now. One other thing is, if you haven't played many matches, due to lack of experience, you're also going to be nervous, and that's totally normal. And the solution to that is, as you play more, you will become more confident in match. You really want to make sure you're working on your confidence. You're really working on your relationship with the word mistake and failure. Uh, because again, it's, it's crazy that those things are considered bad things, but you can ask anyone who's successful, you can ask anyone who's gotten to a high level of the game, you can ask anyone at high level at any field that they had to take risks, they had to fail, they had to make mistakes to learn from those in order to get better. You can look at the best players ever in football or any other sport. And those, all the great players, I can't, you know, maybe there's this exception, but all the great players are gonna have what looks like a massive failure in their career, yet that's what helps them become better. So curing your relationship with that is, is going to be uh, very valuable for you. You need to change that relationship you have with that word mistake and stop putting all this pressure on yourself that if you make a mistake, it's the end of the world. You bounce back. All the pros make mistakes as well. It's fine. You bounce back and also know that the more you dwell on it, the more likely it is you'll make more. And you need to bring that same image of yourself from your practices, the one that you know is so good, you need to bring that same self-image into your matches. Otherwise, if you are one player in practice and see yourself one way and another player in matches, you're really never going to get to that level of performance you have in training. So I hope that's helpful for those of you who are experiencing this. Down below in the comments, I want to hear your story. When it comes to this, are you a player who's amazing in training but just can't do it in matches for some reason? I want to know what's going on. Let me know what the blocks are. Let me know why it is. Um, and if not, you know, you can explain the situation and hopefully get some help from the community here. Um, if you really want to take your confidence to the next level, you can check out my paid course on confidence. It's called Complete Soccer Confidence. That'll be down below for those of you who are interested. As always, check out the two videos I put up on screen. Hit that like button if you like this and you want more videos off the cuff like this where I'm just kind of, you know, extracting things from my head, bringing it out here for you. And I'll see you in the next video.